Now let's look at the concept of center of mass in three dimensions. We need to consider a flat plate called a lamina where we have the density of the plate uniform. The density would be some constant, that's the Greek letter rho, and it's going to occupy some region in the xy plane. So this is some thin film and we want to be able to find the center of mass of this three-dimensional shape. Um, what we're going to assume is that there is some f of x function that is always greater than some g of x function. And as long as we are between some, some values of x, a and b, what we do is we draw a rectangle in, just like when we approximate area by rectangles, we're going to approximate the center of mass by, by using rectangles. When you have this situation where the density is uniform, the same constant density throughout the, the, uh, the entirety of the region, then the name center of mass sometimes gets changed and it's called a centroid. So you'll see them interchange, center of mass and centroid. Um, but, but here's the situation. You have yourself a rectangle. Now, if the, if the density is uniformly distributed across, then you can easily find the center of mass for that particular rectangle. Here's how it works. It's going to be, as far as the x part, the average of the x's. There'll be some interval for the left end point and the right end point. If you call the left end point xi, and the right end point then would be the next one, xi plus 1, then basically this, this here represents the midpoint. It's the average. And so that's going to be the center as far as the x coordinate is concerned. You add them up and divide by 2, the average on the interval. Now for the y's, you take the two heights and do the average. If you want to be in the geographical center of the rectangle, then you're going to take an average y and an average x, basically. So the y bar would be the average of the two y values. Well, the problem with the, the fact that you have a function is that there's varying y values. You know, the x value varies and the y value varies as x. And so what you do is you take that xi bar, you take that midpoint, and you go find what, where it hits the function f of x. Find where it hits the function g of x. And then you subtract. And so you take those will be your averages. You, you add up f of xi bar and g of xi bar, and, and then divide by 2. And so this will give you the center of the rectangle, where xi bar will be what we'll use to represent the x coordinate of the centroid instead of yi bar we would like to represent everything in terms of x and so we say it's one half of f of xi bar and g of xi bar all right great so what are we going to do <clears throat> we're going to take a number of these rectangles first we'll start with the finite number and that'll give us a good approximation but we'll be off and then we'll let the number of rectangles go to infinity let's take a closer look at this rectangle this rectangle has a length and a width the length of the rectangle is once again that same difference in the function values the width of the rectangle is the difference in the x values and this is called dx when when we go to make it infinitesimally small or have infinitely many of these rectangles then it's going to be represented by the symbol dx well then how about the area of the rectangle the area of the rectangle then would be length times width so we take the f of x minus g of x and multiply it by dx. Great. But then once again, as we let the number of rectangles go to infinity, we then will have um, the area represented by the symbol dA. OK, great. And then finally, we have mass. Um, there's the density constant rho. And there's the fact that mass is density times area. And so you take the, the density rho, and you take the area, and you, you multiply them to get the mass. So we take our rho times our area function, and that'll be our mass. These are going to help us understand why we have the formulas that we have 
for the center of mass in 3D. So we take these ideas to the next slide. Oh, and, and as we let the number of rectangles go to infinity, um, then we have an, uh, the, the mass will be represented by some infinitesimally uh, small piece of mass, dm. So we have dA, we have dm, we have dx. As n goes to infinity, the number of rectangles goes to infinity. All right, let's get a good understanding of why we have the formulas that we have. It relates back to what we did for the center of mass in 1D and the center of mass in 2D. If you want to find the moment about the y-axis, remember this is the, the likelihood of the, of, the, um, of the region being able to um, rotate about the y-axis, then you have to take, when, when, when it was point masses, when we had infinitely many of them, we take the mass times the point, and the mass times the, times the point value. And so this, this, this x bar, this xi bar, represents the distance, mass times distance and mass times distance, and add them up if you have n of them. This was, um, these, are, these are point values. Just picture basically what we did for 2D, and now the, this rectangle is, is filled with infinitely many points. And so if it was a finite number, we'd have this symbol here to represent the moment about the y-axis. Remember now, if you're about the y-axis, your radius is x. Your distance from the y-axis is exactly s, uh, x. And so then what do we do? We let the number of rectangles go to infinity. And so then we have a limit. And that's a Riemann sum. So it becomes an integral. And the xi bar becomes an x. The, um, the mass becomes dm, infinitesimally small piece of mass. And the, the Riemann sum becomes an integration symbol. OK. Now remember. Uh, from above, from the formulas that we derived on the other slide, we can then replace dm by the mass formula, and we'd have how to find the moment about the y-axis. We'd have to use this integration. Well, how about the moment about the x-axis? Exactly the same thing, except for now, the distance you are from the x-axis is represented by y, and we just put the bars over to be the average, bar, average y at each one finite number of them, let the number go to infinity, the moment about the x-axis would be a limit of a sum, that's an integration, and we have y times dm. dm is the piece of mass, so we replace y um, and dm, because see, y is the wrong variable. These things will be integrated with respect to x. So remember from, uh, from the previous slide what yi bar was, it was um, the average, right? We take f of xi and y, uh, g of xi, and divide by 2. And so that blue expression here is y, and this red expression is dm. Let's take a look at that. If I have f plus g and f minus g, that's like having a plus b and a minus b. It's a squared minus b squared. And so that's exactly the difference of two squares. Well, we can have that then. We have the difference of squares f of x squared minus g of x squared. The row is still in there. The half is still in there. And this is going to be the way you figure out the moment about the x-axis. OK? And then finally, we have total mass will be just the sum of the masses. If there's infinitely many of them, then it's going to be an integration of dm. And remember what dm is, it's the mass. And so that's how we're going to find total mass. These formulas will help us get our center of mass. OK, remember now from our look at center of mass in 2D, in order to get x bar, we take the moment about the y-axis and divide by the mass. In order to get y bar, we take the moment about the x-axis and divide by the mass. So we're, we're doing a bunch of integrals. These three integrals drive everything. And in one, you would take the y moment and divide by mass. In the other, you would take the x moment and divide by mass. Let's just put that on the next slide. Thin plate f more than g um, for the entirety of a to b. Constant density function rho. We have the moment about the y-axis, factoring out the rho. 
We have the moment about the x-axis, factoring out the row over 2. And then we have the total mass, factoring out the row again. And xi bar, x bar and y bar are found by taking the, the moment about the y divided by the total mass. And the rows end up canceling out. When you have a, a constant density, it ends up not playing a role in your formula. Y bar would be the x moment divided by the mass. Okay, just look at our formulas for um, center of mass in 2D. That's where these guys come from. And the rows cancel out again in here, but we have this half that came up and played a role. Um, you can put that 2 on the bottom. And so these will be your formulas if you're trying to find the center of mass of a plate, a thin plate, where you have an f of x that's always above a g of x. Okay? These formulas simplify if the g of x is the x-axis. If you're just interested in um, underneath the graph of some f of x and above the x-axis, then we can just zero out these functions and we get similar, I mean we get simpler integrals. And that's what this last slide says. g of x is equal to zero and so we have all the same formulas but all the g of x parts are gone and so it's just a special case of the previous and that's the concept of center of mass in 3D it's based off of our concept um, of center of mass in 1D and in 2D just think of um, 3D as being infinitely many point masses from, from 2D and that's how the summation becomes integration because there's infinitely many of the sum. Okay, great.